Hi everyone, Jean Lurson here. This week I'm going to talk about granulating watercolors. You can get some very exciting results from watercolors that granulate. So first let's talk about what causes granulation. Granulation of watercolors mainly occurs with specific pigments that usually has some metal in the makeup of the pigment. There are a few exceptions to the rule, but mainly that is what makes watercolors granulate. I've got a piece of Saunders Waterford cold press paper, and I'm going to do this on both the cold press and hot press paper because the granulation acts a little differently on each. Now, I'm using all Daniel Smith colors because they have a lot of watercolors that granulate. I do use Winsor & Newton watercolors also, and I have some granulating watercolors in those. Unfortunately, the Winsor & Newton site doesn't list those separately as the Daniel Smith site does. And below the video, I'm going to give a link to the Daniel Smith site for granulating watercolors. There's so many that it would be too many to list separately, so I'd rather send you a link. So let's just put a few down that um, I use on a fairly regular basis. And so this is yellow ochre and very useful in, in landscapes. And cerulean blue, which is a lovely blue. Um, he has a, an interesting color that I occasionally use and that is lunar blue. Look, you see it granulates almost immediately. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You can, you can use it in night skies. It's really lovely. Another color that I haven't used very often and I'm going to try here is Mayan blue was actually given to me but I really like that look at that it's beautiful it's got very nice granulations too now rose of ultramarine which is one of my new favorite colors really like that it's a beautiful rich color Another color that I bought this week, which I'm very excited about. I'm, new, I'm not usually a purple person, but this color, permanent mauve, literally granulates the minute you put it down. It's just so exciting. And I'm going to find an, a use for that in, in an abstract landscape, I think. Another color that I do use a lot of is quinacridone burnt orange. This is a beautiful rich orange color. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. And beautiful granulation too happening there. Now for the greens Daniel Smith says that the sap green is a granulating color, which really surprised me because the Winsor & Newton sap green is not a granulating color. So I was surprised to see that in their list of granulating colors. It does it. It's fairly pretty there. And another color that I use quite a bit is permanent brown and it's more of a reddish color and I absolutely love it. Look at that. It's, it's not only a beautiful color but it granulates also and a new color that of Daniel Smith is the Aussie red gold and that's also a beautiful color. And, uh, which I haven't used yet in a landscape. Serpentine Genuine. So I'm going to just put that down there. It's kind of, kind of similar. It's like a lighter version of sap green. And I'm going to try some cobalt blue. That's um, an obvious that a lot of people use. I actually don't use it 
much. I prefer some of the other blues or French ultramarine, which is another granulating color. It's just some sample colors. And look what's happened to the permanent mauve. Is that interesting on what? You could get some very interesting results in a landscape with that mauve. So I also did a sample on hot press paper. This is my hot press paper. And you can see the difference in how it granulates. This is how the lunar blue granulates on the hot press paper, much more so than on the cold pressed, which is interesting. And the um, permanent mauve, slightly different. Actually, I found that it actually granulates more. Maybe I just didn't put it down at an angle when I was painting it. If you look at the greens, at the um, serpentine green, it's showing a little more granulation on the hot pressed paper, the Aussie gold and the permanent brown too. I just love painting on hot pressed paper. I feel because the paint sits on top of the paper rather than soaks in, maybe that's why you get more textured effect. I hadn't really thought about it, but um, that's a possibility. So let's try and do a small abstract watercolor. I'm going to prop this up a little bit with some of these colors and see what we can come up with. It, um, just basically, it's going to be an abstract. That's um, some the lunar blue, but I think I'll put some Mayan blue in that also. And maybe a little bit of yellow ochre and permanent rose. And let's go for the serpentine green. Some quinacridone burnt orange. Oh, look at that. But I really want to get this um, permanent mauve in here because I want you to see how it granulates when it runs. And I'm going to spritz it a little bit. Look at that. See there? how that is grand start to granulate it just you just look at this paint and it starts to granulate let's put some Aussie red gold in there some permanent brown and some cerulean blue some more permanent brown in here. I want to just make this a bit darker up here. And let's put some of the I know from testing it earlier that when you run this sap green through it, it, may, it creates very interesting textures through the permanent mauve. Just wanted a little bit of the blue running through as well. But I do want to add some more mauve where we lost it. Yeah. I 
kind of like that and I just mm, want to take some burnt orange here and add some permanent brown to it as well. So you're getting some interesting breakup of color here. Okay, I'm going to put it flat now. I like the cerulean, how it's granulated here. It looks kind of neat. And the colors are starting to run down into the permanent mauve. It has the most interesting effects when that happens. This is a little bright here, so I'm going to put in some cobalt blue. How about that? Let's just see what happens. Blue and orange are opposites, so you're going to get a grayish color. Just tone that down a little bit. Just a small abstract to show you how these colors work and how they granulate in an actual painting. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.